So in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the key property that we add to components and why it's so important that you make sure you add it in and also why you probably shouldn't use the index for your key. So when you're coding in React, you might have seen this error a lot if you're using the ESLint where it says missing key prop for element in iterator. And this is actually a really useful ESLint rule because if you don't add a key, I think by default React will just use the index of your array, which actually can have a lot of uh, bad side effects, right? So I want to kind of show you one side effect and show you why you should probably add key to everything. So I have a Next.js application set up with a home component here. And it's pretty simple. Basically, every time I click on a button, there's a button here that says add next number. Every time I click on that, it basically pushes 0, 1, 2, 3, et cetera, to this array. This appends it here. Actually, in this case, it's prepending the number. I don't know if it really makes a difference. But I prepend the number. And then I go ahead and just increment the count again so that when I click the add button, it'll do the next number in the you know sequence. So pretty straightforward. Um, and when I push numbers, I'm basically looping over using a map and rendering out a subcomponent called my dropdown. Okay, in this first example, I'm not passing the key property because I want to kind of show you the issues when you forget the key. So if we look at the actual my dropdown, this is literally just a dropdown, right? So it has an open and closed state. And when you click on the button, it's going to either toggle it open or toggle it closed. The rest is not too important to kind of look at. Just a bunch of like SVGs. And then we have the actual like panel here. Um, but one thing that's worth mentioning is we do draw out the, or we do render out the number that was passed in as props here. So this is going to be important because it does make a difference. Um, and I will highlight this in just a second. So let's go over to the actual code. I'm going to click on this button and you'll see that it adds a drop down here, right? So nothing too special. And it has the one inside the drop down. Now keep track of this one because as I keep adding more drop downs, the way React is actually rendering out these components, it does refresh and push the correct props into the drop downs, right? So there's no issue with just pushing in and having these props correctly working when you don't have the key property defined. The issue starts happening um, with the underlying state that your subchildren or your subcomponents may have, because without the key, React doesn't know how to map the state to the correct DOM element on the page, right? So let me kind of highlight this. If I go ahead and click on drop down two, and then I'm gonna click on add next number, you'll see that the drop down for three is basically expanded. But we just clicked on drop down two. So why is three being expanded, right? So React doesn't know how to properly map your components to the kind of underlying state tree or underlying state implementation. And it uses the key to kind of differentiate that and kind of link those together. So when you don't provide a key, index zero, which is drop down three, is what's binding to that underlying state of having the drop down expanded. And remember, before I clicked on this button, this used to be index zero. So what's happening is drop down three is basically assuming the role of index zero. And that's why it's kind of adopting the state of this drop down. Okay, so as I click on things, notice that it shifts all the drop downs over but the actual expanded columns are kind of offset by one. So it's a really weird bug. Um, and you might not actually see this right off the bat until you start using state in your subchildren and your subcomponents, which is why you probably should always set a key on your map loops. All right, so let's just fix this real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and add a key. And typically you want the key to be something that uniquely identifies the element of the array. In some cases you have to use an index, but in most cases, a lot of these things you're mapping over are actually like objects that come from the back end and they usually have like a unique ID on them. So I would probably try to find some type of unique identifier in your collection and use that. In this case, we have a, an array of numbers and they all happen to be incremented by one. So we know that the number itself is unique. So when I add that in, we can go over here and I'm going to do the same thing. Let's just refresh the page. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple drop downs. I'm going to select this one and I'm going to click add next number. And notice that it actually shifted over the drop down like before. But the main takeaway is that this drop down state of being true was applied to the correct index of drop down uh, one, right? This is index location one. And this one over here is index location two. So as I keep adding in numbers, it's properly mapping the new components to the underlying state tree and everything just kind of works as you think it should. So that's kind of like my overview of why um, and kind of giving you an example 
issue of what you might see if you don't use the proper key when you're doing a map. And if you're new to React, make sure you have ESLint always set up so that it will warn you because if you don't have this, you're gonna see some really strange behaviors with your dropdowns not actually, you know, showing the right things as you click on new stuff. <laughs> Let's just add a bunch real quick. So if I draw, if I click a bunch of different ones, you'll see that it actually shifts the ones that I have properly clicked. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little lesson. If you want to join my Discord and ask me questions directly or talk to other people who are in my Discord community, if you're stuck on a React bug or stuck in programming in general, feel free to join. Uh, we have a, a community of nice developers who are willing to help you out. And like always, like, subscribe, comment, and have a good day and happy coding.